Welcome to the first PyTorch Lightning Community Talk Series. I'm joined today. My name is Ari Bornstein. I am uh, the head of developer advocacy at PyTorch Lightning, and I'm joined here with my fellow community advocate, Aish. Um, Aish, do you want to introduce yourself and introduce our guest? Hey, uh, my name is Ashwarya, or you can call me Ash. So uh, I am a fellow developer advocate at PyTorch Lightning, and as a full-time, I am a data scientist in IBM. So today we have Shubham with us. Uh, Shubham Toshniwal is a final year PhD student at Toyota Technological University in Chicago, and he's been working with Professor Kevin Gintel and Karen Livesko. So one of the major areas of research for him has been around natural language processing, and his thesis is centered around entity tracking. Before getting into TTI, he was working with IBM Research, and uh, he was working as a software engineer there. So Shubham, welcome to the talk today, and we're super excited to host you. I wanted to talk to you about like something interesting that you did in your research with people right now don't know. Thanks for the introduction, Nash, and uh, nice to meet you, Ari, as uh, well. So my research uh, has been uh, focused on entity tracking, as Ash said. And uh, the problem of entity tracking is basically that natural language describes uh, entities in the underlying world, say people, organization, location, the events that these entities participate in. As you can imagine, for na true natural language understanding, uh, these models need to track uh, where these entities are or the state of these entities or what entities have been introduced in the text. Uh, and uh, a true natural language understanding model should be able to answer questions uh, related to the state of these entities. So that has been the focus of my uh, research. That That's really amazing. So I came across your project, which was Learning Chess Blindfolded. So I wanted to talk to you about your motivation behind this project. And uh, I understand that it has uh, been working on uh, natural language models. So could you talk more about them? Yeah, so the connection between the two could be, uh, might not sound very strong, but I'll try to connect the two areas. So uh, we we were trying to develop language models for chess, and which we called as a learning chess blindfolded because here the model, the language model for chess, is not seeing the board. It's learning the chess, learning the game of chess entirely through these games written in text. And what is cool about games annotated for chess is that. In uh, chess, the games are literally all about the piece was moved from square one to square two. So, and it's all about the 64 squares and a bunch of pieces on those. So, uh, the pieces are the entities in this world, and uh, the language model is just trying to predict where is the piece uh, or where are the, uh, what is the board state. And according to that, it's trying to predict where the pieces will end up and all those things. So uh, the so as you can see the la the language modeling in chess is tightly integrated to entity tracking. Uh, that's a central problem there. So that's really cool. And when you're like researching around entity tracking and natural language processing, uh, why did you decide to use the uh, PyTorch Lightning framework for your project? Yeah, I think there were a couple of reasons. Uh, the first one was that uh, around the time when I started uh, this project. PyTorch didn't natively support 16-bit training, which Py Py PyTorch Lightning did. So that was a big, uh, uh, big uh, reason for choosing PyTorch Lightning. And then there were some other very cool reasons uh, like uh, native TensorBoard integration and just the clean, uh, clean separation of different uh, things, uh, different modules of your project. So that was really cool about PyTorch Lightning. That's that's awesome and always amazing for us to hear and. When you're working with Lightning, I know that you worked with a couple different versions of Lightning. What are some of the dream features that you wish Lightning had that would help you take your research to the next level? Yeah, I think uh, one dream feature would be a tighter integration with some of the computing infrastructures. Uh, so in particular, I use the Slurm, uh, Slurm cluster. And uh, some, uh, some cool features might be that how much time is left for my job and can the model, can the framework automatically requeue jobs? So just a tighter integration with computing infrastructure would be really cool. So I'm really excited to hear that. And I know that on Thursday, actually, we just released uh, 1.2 of PyTorch Lightning, where they completely refactored all the backend accelerators. So I'm really hoping that some of that will, will uh, show itself in, 
turn out with a lot of more interesting and tighter integration. I want to thank you again for coming out and joining our show and being our first guest as part of the uh, Lightning Community Spotlight. And for everybody watching at home, I'd love for you guys to stay tuned and catch more episodes and definitely check out Shubham's work on Learning Chess Blindfolded. Uh, you can see the link here in the description. And uh, be sure to follow us both on our PyTorch Lightning project here on GitHub and on Twitter as well to keep up to date with all the most recent PyTorch Lightning advances and work in the community.